This is quite a hard video to start with this Vortex because, well, it used to be owned by a really good friend of mine who passed away sadly in 2021, August 2021 in fact. I say it was owned by him, which it was, but it actually was originally mine as well. This Vortex has probably got the most like history or stories behind it on this channel than anything else that I own. One of the reasons is because it was sent to me by Armour or Horizon Hobby. It turned up completely out of the blue. It went to the wrong address and then it arrived with me. I'm not gonna go into the ifs, buts, whys and stuff like that, but this is the only car that Armour or Horizon Hobby have ever sent me. That's not the, um, that's not the important thing with this. The important thing with this is I'm gonna finish this for Lenny. I wanna try and get it to 100 mile an hour for him. And we're going to do it at Rossa, which is an event that myself and Lenny had planned to do uh, last year. And obviously, and obviously that didn't happen. Another good friend of mine, Sean, was given the task of um, getting rid of Lenny's stuff for the family. Lenny had loads of stuff. He had he had a whole mix of stuff from crawlers to this sort of stuff to um, WL toys and things like that. When I spoke to Sean, he said he had this. There was no doubt that I had to have it back. I don't want to make this video all like depressing and stuff. We're going to have some real good fun with this. We're going to get this thing going crazy and it's going to be a nice journey and, and a way to remember um, Lenny. Now, Lenny died on the 14th of August, peacefully in his sleep, but it was un completely unexpected. The last conversation I had with Lenny was about the Vortex and it was on the 13th of August. Then on the 14th, I had a call from Sean and well, such sad news. We were going over what he was going to do to this, and he'd just been doing some testing. He put some different, he put a different motor in it. It's got it's got a 4S capable Spectrum Firma um, ESC in it, and he'd said to me that he'd got 67 mile an hour, and then had a <laughs> quite a big crash in it. Now, from looking back on the conversation we had on Facebook, it's got I think it's a 2,850 kV Surplus Hobby motor. It's a Spectrum Firma 4S. Um, capable ESC. I presume this is out of the maybe the Armour 4S range. I'm not sure. It's got dual connectors on there, and it's got a 25 kilo like Banggood or AliExpress servo in there. I don't know whether he's changed the gear. And we were talking about doing the like you can do a Traxxas spur gear mod on it. So I don't know if he's done that. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to completely strip it down. It's a little bit dirty. It seems to be okay, but what I want to do is completely strip it down make sure everything's okay, clean it all up, and then we're gonna discuss my plans for it, because to get this thing to do 100 mile an hour, we're probably gonna to have to do a few mods. But one thing I do wanna do, is I wanna keep it as a Vortex, so I want that chassis the same length. We'd also spoke about some of the other guys that were doing speed runs with this, they put like the big rock chassis on it and extended it. All you're doing then is just running basically a, a different 3S armor with a Vortex body, so I wanna keep the dimensions the same, I am gonna do some quite crazy changes to it though, and yeah, we'll see where we go. So there we go, all stripped down. Can't see anything wrong with it. Probably gonna take the bearings out, the steering, and just clean all them up. I don't know where Lenny was speed running this, but <laughs> it's a little bit dirty. So uh, before we do anything else, I need to give it a quick clean, scrub it all. Diffs feel okay. Looks like it had the stock. Well, I don't know that stock. That might be one of the um, like the harder composite ones. But anyway, stock gearing in there. So that's something we're gonna change. But so I'm gonna. Fill the sink up with some soapy water, leave all this to soak for a bit and give it a scrub uh, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you some of the stuff I'm doing to it. So this is where it's gonna start to get interesting. I've already got a vendetta. I recently got this off of Big Beard RC, who is a Rossa veteran from what I've seen. He's done a few events and he's got some pretty quick stuff as well. Anyway, this is off him. He was selling it as a roller. And the reason I bought it, one, it's got some nice carbon fiber wings on it, which I think I may be able to put on the Vortex. 
It's got this really nice, I think it's carbon and steel or carbon and titanium. I don't know all the materials on there, there's definitely some carbon on there. I'm hoping I can modify this because obviously the Vendetta is a little bit longer than the Vortex, but I'm hoping I can mod this and get this to fit, put that bearing in as well, uh, give it a bit more support for the high RPMs. So it's got custom RC upgrades, um, motor mount, but more importantly, this has all been changed, so it will run mod one gears. And that's gonna be important. But there is something you can do, the stock one is you can convert this using a Traxxas spur gear, a smaller one, and drill in some holes and stuff like that. Uh, this has already been converted. I'm not sure how this has been converted, but, but it will run mod ones. He's had this over 100 mile an hour, so I know it's capable of it with the correct gear in and obviously the right motor and stuff. I'm also gonna see if I can mod this to fit on there on the front. One of the biggest problems of the Vortex is keeping the front end down when you start getting some speed. I've already been there and it is really hard to keep it down. This was it when I was running it 6S. So, gonna see if I can get that on or make something out of that to make a front spoiler for that to try and keep the front down. And I'm gonna do the same at the rear and try and use this rear diffuser. So this bit, front and rear, I'm sure it's the same across the range. So I'm hoping I can fit that and that, make a bit of tweaking and stuff. And that should hopefully keep this thing on the ground. Oh, it's also got some GRPs, which don't look like they're in bad condition. And it's got 17 mil hubs, which I might be able to use. It depends on the drive shaft length in there. We shall see. Anyway, that is the sole reason I bought that, to use the parts off for that. And it had come in handy as well for spares. It's always handy to have some spares lying about. So I've washed all the parts that need washing for the Vortex. Again, I could maybe use the shocks off that, but I want to use as much Vortex stuff as possible. So I'm going to limit the travel on them so it makes the Vortex sit lower down. I have dried all the parts, but We'll leave them for a bit, and while they're drying properly, I am gonna strip all the bits off of this that I think I'm gonna need. So, just semi-assembling it, ready to see if I can modify these to go on for the aero. Good news, Vendetta steering blocks, hubs, and drive shafts all fit. Now the drive shafts are a little bit shorter. Because I'm gonna have this sat quite low, it's not gonna be a problem. If you were doing a Vortex for like Bastion and stuff, I'd probably recommend getting like the Typhon um, drive shafts because they're a little bit longer, but these are not gonna fall out. So that saved me a bit of time getting hold of some Typhon 17 mil adapts and drive shafts. So I am happy about that. So diffs are in, cleaned, greased, everything is back together there. This is, I need to clean this up. This is obviously out of the Vendetta. This is the Mod 1 gearing in there. I have to count how many teeth are on that spur. I've had a quick measure up of this centre shaft and it's actually gonna be too long. So I might be able to mod it to fit. We'll leave that till last, I think. Right, anyway, I'm gonna have a tidy up. I'm gonna strip all the suspension down, put some fuel tubing in there. So limiting the shocks is pretty easy. You can limit it in both directions. So you can limit the ride height, which is what I'm doing, and you can, you can also limit how far it sort of pushes down. All you do is get a bit of fuel tube. It might take a few attempts. Work out kind of how much you need to restrict it. Slide that over there. The concept's the same for all shocks. This is an armor shock, so it's slightly different to others. Pop it all back together. And then you can see by the arms on this, they're sort of slightly lifted up in the angle of the drive shaft. Basically restricts how much um, droop you've got in there. You can also, which I might have to do, I'll take some fuel tubing with me when I go to Rossa, but what I might have to do is put a little bit in there as well. And that's to reduce how much it pushes down. A lot of people go pretty much solid there. So you just have a very small amount of movement or no movement at all. But I mean, it's really stiff. So I might have to put some in there, but as you can see, it's pretty easy to, uh, restrict the shocks just got one more front one to do and then that should set our ride height so ride height done i've done a few other bits as well i just switched the camera off and just got on with it um, just to get it finished last night back at it again today ride height sets we've got a slight rake there which means front slightly lower than the rear the rear has got full travel and it does hit the floor so i'm gonna put some limiters in there to stop it from hitting i did limit the front however it just at the very end of its travel it does still hit i will restrict the rear so that it doesn't scrape too much you can see i've put the vendetta front on here you have to change the hinge pin um, like adapter or bracket to get that to fit same with the rear one so spoilers so the front one i've put the foam on 
I've sliced it down a bit and I'm just in the middle of preparing like a front spoiler. I decided to remove the one that had been put on there because it just stuck out a bit too far forward for the vortex. Whereas this one, I'm hoping, I'm gonna trim it and stuff. It looks a bit like a wedge of cheese or something at the moment. Once it's painted and trimmed up a little bit, that should help stop the air getting underneath it too much. I'm not gonna go into like the technicalities of aero and stuff. So obviously you do want air underneath. The faster air you can get underneath and the slower air you can get over the top, the more downforce you've got. Not getting into that, but that's the general gist of aero. Fast underneath, slow on top, more downforce. Then the rear diffuser, <laughs> looking at it, it reminds me of one of them uh, monkeys. <laughs> So my plan for the rear, again, this fits on there nicely. You just need that adapter for where the hinge pins are to get it to fit properly. I'm gonna remove the spoiler and then we're gonna use these carbon bits. I'm gonna trim this and I'm gonna box it in like that. So although it looks a bit funny at the moment, with this spoiler removed, with these fitted and boxed in there, I think it's gonna look quite cool. I don't think I'm gonna buy new electronics this. I'm just gonna use what I've got. This is the motor that Lenny had in it. It's a uh, 3670, 2850 kV, uh, surplus hobby motor. You can see quite a tall can there. Search for my stuff, I've got a 3660, which is 4000 kV, so a nice bit of speed. I think that's gonna probably be a bit too small. We need some grunt for this. So then I had this surplus hobby, uh, 2,650, and that's a 4068 can, so a nice size. And then I found these. I got two of these, and these are for my USA one. I was gonna do a dual motor setup. I might still do that, but this is 2,650 kV, but it's a 4074. So it's a nice big can. I think it's gonna fit. Hopefully it'll squeeze in. That is gonna give us bags of power. And with it being 2,650 kV, if we pump the old volts up, we potentially run this on a single 6S LiPo. With the right gear in, that may just be enough. The spur gear on there looks like a 34 tooth, so plenty of gearing options there and definitely gonna need this big fat motor to get this thing moving. We're all in. So gone for a trusty Max 8. I know Hobby Wing isn't everyone's choice because they, they're a little bit overprotected. So sometimes they can um, go into like a limp mode if they're geared quite high, but we're all in. I managed to get the Bearing there, I had to flip the drive shaft because of how big this motor is. The thicker end of the drive shaft was rubbing on the motor. I think we're all good. I'm gonna look at servos, but at the moment I've got a 25 kilo metal geared um, e-tronics in there running 7.4 volts as well. So it's not too bad. It's on 4S. <laughs> Watch the wheel speed on 4S. It's not censored, but throttle's nice and uh, responsive. These are GRPs, these are belted tires, I believe. I'm not sure we're gonna to need to run this on six. Because it's got that Max 8, it will run 6S, but 4S looks like it's got some mad wheel speed. So I was lucky enough to get access to a local like flying school. And the runway's not very long, around 600 meters, which is absolutely perfect for this. I only used probably a couple hundred meters of it. Um, the surface is not great. I kind of scouted out a bit up the center to run it. Um, still got some suspension movement on this. It wasn't a problem. Running it on 3S, because it's just a shakedown, I didn't want to go like full bean straight away. So, so just stuck a 3S LiPo in it, put the GPS in and got some really clean runs. 69 mile an hour. I don't think that's bad. All going well on 4S. I want to hope to push around 90 plus and then we may have to go 6S to go full beans. Anyway, are you ready to see the finished product? Once I've revealed it, I will tell you how I got to, well, I'll let you wait and see. Are you ready to see this? I know you've seen the thumbnail, but are you ready? Oh yes, the Turbo Tonka. I've not seen it with the hoons on, it looks so good. Inspiration behind it, and then I'll talk about what it says there, but why did I do it yellow and why has it got a Tonka sticker on it? Well, when I was making this, I molded it all, molded it all out of like white plastic card, then sprayed it black. While I was spraying it, this roll of tape was next to me. And I thought that would look good, like a caution colors. So then I thought, oh, we could do the body yellow. While I was spraying it here, I just out of the corner of my eye saw my little Tonka truck up there. And that's all there was to it. So Lenny used to drive lorries, he used to drive car transporters. I am quite confident that when he was a kid, he was a bit of a fan of Tonka trucks. Has a bit of relevance and it just looks really cool. He was also a massive Red Dwarf fan and something he used to always say was, smoke me a kipper, I'll be back for breakfast. Which, if you're a Red Dwarf fan, 
You all know that saying. If you're not a Red Dwarf fan, well, here it is. I'll grab my things and be off, Dave. Smoke me a kipper, Skipper. I'll be back for breakfast. <laughs> Smoke me a kipper. I'll be back for breakfast. The Turbo Tonka. So I suppose it's time to get ourselves to Rossa. The weather's not looking great, but hopefully we can get this thing on the runway and push for triple figures. Let's go. Right, come on then, Lenny. Let's see what we can do. This one's for you, Lenny. Through the traps. Let's go. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going? That's nice. 80 mile an hour. Happy with that. There you go, Lenny. Got you through the traps. 81. So, 4S clean run yesterday. It's day three now, final day. Just charging a 6S. I know what Lenny would have done on the last day here. He'd have just sent it, so that's what we're doing. Put a 6S in, we're going to send it. We get through the traps, great. If we don't and it crashes, well, we've had fun. Just going to go and do a little bit of testing with it, make sure it's going straight, do a few tweaks. I've taken this out this morning, checked all the grub screws, checked that the spur gear grub screws in, put the ESC back in. I need to just check the settings on there again, and then we are ready for, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to push 100 with this, but we'll see what happens. Come on, boy. What you got? What you got for me? You're clear to go. What was it? Sideways. <laughs> oh, sideways through the traps. Couldn't go full power. 6S again, yeah, car 74, 6S. Right, oh, let's try this again. Get power on a bit earlier, I think. Right, we need to get the power on earlier. Power on earlier. Am I clear to go? Am I clear? Yes, lost signal, but I don't know what that was, but that was on, not full throttle. Yes, Lenny, yes, Lenny, that's the fastest. I don't know what it was. A hundred, a hundred mile an hour, yes. Are you ready? I'm shaking. <laughs> yes, that's it. That is it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, mate. Yeah. Yes, mate. Yes, mate. 104 mile an hour. With a tonka tie. Mental. That's what Lenny wanted. 100 mile an hour. Oh, it's a little bit emotional. I'm right at the moment, I might later. Yes! After that 104 mile an hour, or 100 mile an hour through the traps, 104 mile an hour on the GPS, I had to go and actually sit in my car for 10 minutes. It was such an emotional run. To be able to finish this video with my tribute build for Lenny, passing through the traps at Rossa at over 100 mile an hour, it's just awesome. And I think it is only right that we find a space for it on the shelf here. I don't think I'll run this again. I didn't crash it at all. It stayed absolutely pristine. Even the tires don't look like they've been touched. I think we just need to leave it on the shelf as a little tribute to Lenny. Now I didn't get this hat from that run. It's still part of the 100 mile an hour club. And if Lenny had taken this vortex to Rossa, I am absolutely sure he'd have been sporting one of them hats.